is a disease of cellular cytotoxicity, remember that. B cells have nothing to do with this. Actually, if our immune system responds to tuberculosis using the B cell, then mycobacterium leprae would occur or leprosy will occur because humoral response cannot take care of intracellular pathogen and mycobacterium tuberculosis is intracellular. Okay, so now the pathogen is here. What will happen in this space is, so this is about three weeks now. Initial infection could have resolved and nothing happened. That has not resolved, let us say, so the second part is that three weeks in, we have the macrophage presenting, so this is the macrophage, on the macrophage MHC2, on the MHC2, macrophage is presenting the antigen or the pathogen to the, to whom? We have done this 1000 times. T cell, which T cell? CD4 positive or helper T cells. Now what happens? So sensitization would occur, right? So macrophage will bring the antigen there. With that, macrophage is going to release IL-12. Remember IL-12 interferon gamma axis? So this is that. This is the co-stimulation when IL-12 will come in here, CD4 cells will become activated. When they become activated, what will they do? These will release IL-2 IL in addition to many other cytokines. IL-2 will cause proliferation of the CD4 cells. So now the CD4 cells are going to start multiplying. The lymph node is going to start becoming swollen with the CD4 cells. Then the CD4 cells would also release what? Interferon gamma. and interferon gamma would activate the macrophage. Why? Because this is an intracellular pathogen and we need the cytotoxic cells to become active to kill the pathogen. Now when the macrophage is active, what will it do? do? So follow the green side now. Activated macrophage would release chemokines that would attract, so these will be chemoattractants. Right, so what will they, they do? So let's say if there is this blood vessel, so that is the blood vessel somewhere over here in this area, the blood vessel, the chemotractants will cause the monocytes to come in, these will cause other T cells to come in, so monocytes, T cells, B cells, so many types of inflammatory cells will start coming in. So as these cells start coming in, what else will happen? So in the chemokines, one important one is tumor necrosis factor. Then there is also IL-1. IL-1 would start causing fevers. Then there are more interleukins that would suppress the, the um, appetite in the patient. So the weight loss would start over time. Tumor necrosis factor is caused these things to come in. So now what would happen is the war would start in the area where the pathogens are. Right? So inflammation would start, the reaction would start, hypersensitivity has started, the, the system, the, the patient has become, the immune system of the patient has become allergic to this pathogen and the fight has started. That fight will cause what? Look, this pathogen can evade the macrophage. So when everything has become active to kill the pathogen, what will happen to the macrophage now? Let us see. Macrophage, when it is active, other than the chemokines, it will also do this. The gene in the macrophage, so this is one, chemokines. Let us go there. Second, some interleukines. Third, the genes in the macrophage will open up. This is the third thing to release nitric oxide that is part of destroying the pathogen. So nitric oxide will be released. Then fourth, there will be release of reactive oxygen species, ROS. All of that once again will try to contain the pathogen 
and to destroy it. In this process, granulomas will form. So, let us see when this war starts here, when the activation starts here, what will happen in the tissue. So, come here, let us see what happens inside the tissue. Now, what is happening is in the tissue and in the primary tuberculosis, this will happen in the middle and lower lobes. Secondary tuberculosis destruction occurs in the upper lobes. Now, what is happening in the middle and lower lobes is that the cells are going to start getting destroyed because of all of this activation and all of the nitric oxide and reactive oxygen species. When the cells are destroyed, they would release a lot of fatty acids. Now, mycobacterium does not like the fatty acid. So, wherever the fatty acid is, mycobacterium runs out of there. It does not want to live there. So, that central part where the damage is occurring will become cheese-like. This is called caseous necrosis. Necrosis is simply the cell death and caseous is that cheese-like. Caseous means cheese. So, cheese-like appearance would be in the center of the damage. With this over here, the pH will be low as well. So, this area is acidic as well because of all of these chemicals that have been released. So, the acid plus the oxygen is coming in less because of all the destruction here. So, acidic environment with the, fa with the fatty acids, these environments make the mycobacterium not grow. Micro mycobacterium is a slow growing pathogen. It grows, it replicates in about 15 to 20 hours compared to other pathogens that replicate within minutes or for example, E. coli in 20 minutes. So, now this has retarded the growth further. So, you do not find the mycobacterium in the cheese like central part. On the periphery, you would see lot of epithelioid cells. What are these epithelioid, epithelium like cells? These are actually macrophages and histiocytes that are converting themselves into these spindle shaped or fusiform pink colored cell which have epithelial structure to them, body is trying to wall off this infection or this damaged area. With that, there will be lots of monocytes and mononuclear infiltrate which will mean monocyte T cells, B cells, they are here as well. With that, there are going to be macrophages that are active and sitting here as well and many macrophages that are trying to take care of this pathogen and the pathogen is just running around and it, they cannot kill it. They become frustrated and they fuse, they hold each other's hand and say, we will not let this pathogen go from here. So, now when they fuse, they make multinucleated giant cells. Normal structure under the microscope, they appear like this horseshoe shaped cells as well. So, this structure, this structure is called a necrotizing granuloma. or caseous granuloma. What is the structure of this now? Internal cheesy part which has the fatty acids and the cell debris and the acidic environment. Mycobacterium is not found here. Then a rim of epithelioid cells and fibrous repair cells, repair elements plus mononuclear infiltration plus giant cells, multinucleated giant cells. Histiocytes, histiocytes are nothing but macrophages and monocytes are called histiocytes. These are the macrophages and monocytes that are present in the tissue. So, granuloma formation would occur. That would also mean that calcification, wherever there is damage, there is calcification. Calcification would occur. So, when this granuloma would occur, it is a microscopic structure. But when multiple granulomas would keep appearing and they will keep fusing with each other, slowly this microscopic structure will become macroscopic. You can actually see it with the naked eye and I will show you the diagram for it. When you can see it with the naked eye, you would see a cheese like white cheese like consistency and 
structure this is called this is called ghon focus so this caseation present in the parenchyma of the lung is called ghon focus if the same thing happens in the in the lymph nodes as well which it happens same caseation and same necrosis and same granuloma formations present in the lymph node then these two things together are called ghon complex this calcification when seen in the in the x ray is called ranki complex ranki complex ranki's complex is nothing but the presence of the ghon complex in the in the lungs now this is the second outcome of the first exposure of the primary tb normally even at this stage we wall off the pathogen we arrest them in these caseous calcified areas and the patient becomes okay patient had flu like syndrome some fever and stuff like that and he became okay after a few weeks now this thing is sitting in his body and the pathogen here can become reactivated later when the patient is weak that may be because of age that may be because patient got some sort of a disease that causes the cause the immunocompromise that may be patient had some sort of surgery or you gave him some medicines which reduced his um, immune system strength for example steroids that may be bone marrow problems so somewhere in the future that may be poverty patient is not eating well so somewhere in the future when the patient is weak this thing can become reactivated and that will be secondary tb tb now primary tb can stop here and patient is normal there is a third outcome of the primary tb and the third outcome is that this structure so third outcome is that in some patients we cannot contaminate we cannot contain the mycobacterium easily for example there are there are gr group of people who have the n ramp 1 protein in the macrophages that is damaged and what is the function of that protein that protein's function is to have it is present in the phagosome and lysosome it's an ion channel n ramp 1 and the function of that protein is to help do the phagocytosis and help activate the phagosomes and lysosomes or it takes part in their function so in some people this is there is a genetic problem and this protein is not well functioning when that doesn't happen then we cannot really form this granuloma and stop here instead macrophages are not working well at all so the tb just continues to become spread in that case the patient would have what we call primary progressive tuberculosis primary so if i write here this is the primary progressive meaning it would continue it will not stop tb and the primary progressive tb would then cause damage to the lower lobes it can cause damage to the middle lobe normally upper lobes are not involved it will cause damage to the lymph nodes so ghon complex will be present focus will be present and then it is possible that the pleural surfaces are involved and the pleural effusion and pleural um, infections or empyema or even pneumothorax with the pleural damage can occur so this is the primary tuberculosis so guys why does this maturation failure occur not only the phagosome lysosome fusion is blocked mycobacterium tuberculosis is very smart it also blocks apoptosis in the macrophages so macrophage cannot in the frustration that it cannot kill the pathogen macrophage cannot kill itself outside cells cannot ask the macrophage to kill itself because it is infected so now apoptosis is not going to happen autophagy by the macrophage eating itself and killing itself that is not going to happen activation of the macrophage is not happening working of the macrophage the interleukin production this this whole chemokine releases are also stopped 
So macrophage essentially becomes a beautiful home for mycobacterium tuberculosis in which it just sleeps and have fun and replicates. Look at this slide here. We are looking at this white area. This white area is the gone focus. This is a caseous necrosis present in the parenchyma of the lung. And we can actually see a lots of cavitation as well. So this is primary plus secondary TB together. Here this is another example where you can see a large area of the caseous necrosis. Remember this is not a granuloma. I saw some patient uh, students who called this a granuloma. This is granuloma is a microscopic structure. This is not a microscopic structure. This is a macroscopic structure. So many, many granulomas that kept coalescing together, that kept merging together to form the structure. And so this is the gone focus as well. Look at this. This is the necrotizing granuloma. So if you see here in the center, this all the area here, this all is dead cells, fibrous material, acidic material, fatty acids and stuff like that. As we go outward, pathogen is also moving outward plus the fight is also happening outward. So here we will see a lots of mononuclear cells as you can see from those big lots of dots plus you will see lots of fibrous strands here which is the repair uh, that is happening plus you see the horseshoe shaped multinuclear nucleated giant cells. So look at this, this is one, this is another, this is a giant cell, right. So these giant cells are actually histiocytes or macrophages that have fused together in their frustration to try to take care of this infection and trying to contain it. And then of course you see some more cellularity here and this is all mononuclear. So this is a necrotizing granuloma, the central is necrotized. Compare this to a non-necrotizing granuloma here, this is also a granuloma. You can see the cellularity on the sides. You can see that even inside the granuloma, there are cells present. So this is a non-necrotizing granuloma. Maybe this is sarcoidosis, this is some, something else. Now also remember, necrotizing granuloma is not a um, diagnosis of tuberculosis. This can happen for many reasons. It can happen because of um, fungal infections, it can happen because of other infections, it can happen because of immune deficiencies, it can happen because of many other reasons too. Cool. So that concludes the discussion about the primary tuberculosis.